Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 2 of my computer craft tutorial series. Today's episode is variables and math. Uh, we're going to cover what variables are, how they work, and uh, since we're going to be doing variables, I figured we might as well also jump into some basic math functions. Don't worry, it's just simple addition and subtraction. Hopefully nothing too crazy for you guys just yet. So uh, being as this is episode two, I'm going to get started. So let's start looking at variables and how we use them inside Lua. All right, so we're going to open up our computer and get right into things. So we remember last episode I created a Hello World program. Let's edit this up a little bit, and we can see right now that we've got the uh, option here to print out Hello World. That's basically all this program does. I'm going to change this program up a little bit. And uh, you know what? To be honest with you, I'm actually going to add one thing to the agenda. We're also going to cover comments in code. This is nice and simple, so don't worry about it. Uh, basically, we're going to comment out the Hello World line right now. And in order to do that, we just put um, the minus sign twice. Uh, so uh, the dash or the minus sign, you put twice in front of any words, and that makes this line a comment. And what a comment is, is it basically tells the um, code behind computer craft to ignore anything on this line after the double minus. So if you place it at the beginning, it means this entire line will be igno ignored when it goes to execute the code. So let's go through that right now. Um, the hello world function will not run uh, because of the fact that this double dash is here. We've commented it out. The reason it's called comments is more often than not, it's meant to um, put comments in your code about how it works. So if I were to space out over here and put a double dash, again, a comment indicator, and say this clears the screen, this sets the cursor position. By placing these comments on the line, it kind of gives your uh, people reading your code a little bit clearer idea of what it does. Now, obviously, most people reading your code would know what term.clear does, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, more often than not, your code's going to be a little bit more complex, and by putting comments in, it makes it so other people who are reading your code um, just have a better idea. So, just to recap real quick, the Hello World program will still clear the screen and change the cursor position, but we will no longer print out Hello World. And the reason I'm covering this is I'm going to keep this commented out for the next line. So let's run the Hello World program. Note that it cleared the screen, set the cursor position, but did not um, change or print out Hello World. It jumped past that point. So let's jump back into Hello World. And uh, we'll actually write a new program. We'll call it variables. Or we'll just put VAR, short for variables. Part 1. Cool. Totally new program now. Hello World is still doing its thing. Now we've got a new program that we're writing. We're going to go into variables right now. A variable in a programming language is a way to store information that can be accessed later on. Basically, if you want to tell the computer that, hey, I want this uh, number to be stored in what's called a variable, it'll keep that number, and then you can reference that number later on. And the best way to demonstrate this is with a quick introduction. Now, I would do want to note for those familiar with other programming languages that Lua is uh, a type of programming language that you don't have to define the type of variable that you're using before uh, you start using it. It will automatically assign its type. And I believe this is called dynamic types, but I don't know. I might have just made that term up. But basically, as soon as you put data into a variable, it will determine the type of variable on the fly. Uh, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. It's more uh, important in other programming languages. So let's create our very first variable. Uh, the first word I'm going to type is local, and I'll get into what that means in a bit. But for now, just know that you more often than not want to use local variables. The other option to use is global, um, and we'll get into some of that the differences between those later on. And then you want to name your variable. You can name it anything you want, for the most part. There's certain uh, reserved words, uh, they're actually called reserved words, that uh, the interpreter here will uh, interpret, and you don't want to use them. So something like print. We already know that using the print word uh, tells it to execute something. So we want to avoid things like that. Um, but we'll call our first variable x. Nice and simple. Now, more often than not, you're not want to just call a variable x, but for now we're just demonstrating. Now, to store a value in x, you just have to type x and then the equal sign and whatever you want to store in there. We can store a number. For example, we can store the number 5. Or we can store a string, such as hello world. Now, note, 
that there were two differences here. Uh, when I was storing the hello world, I have quotes around it because it's a string and uh, strings in programming languages are a series of letters. But a number doesn't need to have quotes, you just put a number there. So let's for now print hello world again using a variable. So we defined our variable first by typing local x. Then we assigned a value to the variable x and that value is hello world. Now we can jump down here and type print x. Let's save and exit. VAR part 1, we're going to run the program. Ta-da! It printed hello world. So as you can see, variables are very useful because we might want to keep track of different things. Now the cool part about this is we can go ahead and print x again. Print it three times. So we're saving ourselves some typing by continuously using x instead of using hello world. But that's only some of the utility of the uh, variables. Now when I ran it again, it printed out three times. Now I've cleared some things out. Let's go ahead and look at numbers and math. We can also store numbers in our variables. And for now, we're going to store the number 5. Sounds easy enough. Now I can come down here and print x again. Let's see what happens. Ta-da! It printed out number 5. Perfect! Now, there might be some instances where you want to do some math, and using variables is a really good way to handle that. Um, we just need to simply say print x plus 1. Should be easy enough. Now when we run our program, we'll take a look at the code real quick. When we run our program, what's going to happen is it's going to define the variable x, then it's going to assign that variable x to number 5. And then when you tell it to print, it's going to interpret what's inside the parentheses here, take the number 5, add 1 to it, and then print it out. But we should note that it does not actually change the value of x. And to prove that, we're going to print x by itself afterwards. Let's go ahead and exit the program and run it. So what we should see when we run this is 6 and then 5. Perfect. So again, it printed out 5 plus 1, but it didn't change the value of x. It just quickly interpreted what 5 plus 1 was and then printed it out. If we want to change the variable um, x, we can simply type x equals and then tell it how to change it. Now, anybody who's a math student knows that you shouldn't write algebra equations and use the variable in both the left and right side of the equation. But in programming, this is okay. You can simply write x is equal to x plus 5. And what this will do is it'll take the x variable and assign it to whatever the x variable was, plus 5. Nice and easy. We'll print x again. And what we should get now is the following. x is equal to 5, print out x plus 1, we'll get our 6 again. x is still equal to 5, and print it out, and you'll just get 5. Then we change the value of x to equal 5 plus 5, and we should get 10. 6, 5, and 10. And this is how we use variables to keep track of information within our programs. And there's nothing stopping you from having more variables. We can create a variable called local y. Easy enough. And we can say that y is equal to x plus 5 again. And what this will do is it will take the existing value of x, which is currently 10 by the time it gets to this line in the program. And I'll space these out a little bit just to make it easier to read for you guys. So by the time it gets to this line, x is equal to 10. And now it's going to assign y to be equal to 10 plus 5. And we can again print x and print y. So what would you expect the output of this program to be? Let's check it out. It printed out 6 and then 5 and then 10 as it did before. And then it printed out 10 again and 15, which is the value of y. Nice and easy. Now I've cleared out all this code again, and I should note that if you want, you can go ahead and assign the value of, of a variable as soon as you define it. So we've got all in one line, local x is equal to 5. And then we can print x. And it prints 5. So you don't have to do that on two lines. If you want to be quick and smooth about it, you can just define it right in one line here and not have to worry about uh, having two different lines to define your x variable and then call it. Now, of course, what kind of computer would this be if it couldn't do things besides add? 
we're going to just show you guys real quick. As I mentioned, we're doing a little bit of math here. Some subtraction, x minus three. And I'll put a comment in here that says this should be two. We can also print x times three for multiplication, and this should be 15. Uh, let's also define a new variable, just so I can divide. And we'll say y divided by 2. This should be 5, because 10 divided by 2 should be 5. And finally, you can also do uh, the power of. Uh, so if you want to bring a number to a power, you can just do um, x and then a caret, which is your shift 6 key. Uh, let's put, I don't know, 3. And uh, 5 times 3 times 3 should be 45. Let's see what happens. 5, 2, 15, 5, 125. Oh yeah, I multiplied wrong. That should be 125. <laughs> so I was close. 5, 2, 15, 5, 125. That's what I get for trying to do math in my head during a tutorial video. Now do note that your variables are case sensitive. So I'm creating a local variable called capital H, capital W, and I'm gonna make it a string called hello world. And remember strings are uh, just a clump of letters all together. And you denote the start and end with them with the quotes. Uh, I'm gonna print lowercase hw, and then print uppercase hw. And this should not work, and this should work. And make sure to put the double dashes right there. There we go. So uh, it got through all the numbers we had. Now the one that didn't work is the blank line here because there was no variable defined as lowercase hw, but the uppercase hw did work. Another type of variable is called a Boolean variable. And Boolean va values can only store two things, either true or false. No other data can be stored in it. Now, at first, it might not seem like this is useful, but as we get into further um, and more complicated programs, it will be very useful to keep track of true and false. Um, it's very simple to define. Uh, just create a local variable, call it whatever you want. We'll call it bool sample, and uh, you can assign it either true or false. And we'll print bool sample. Notice that it printed out true. Now this is not a string. It's actually a Boolean variable called true or false, and that's the only information it can store. So this is different from a string. Now the important thing to tell you the difference here is let's try this out. So in programming, it's sometimes important to be able to switch back and forth between true and false. And again, this is something we'll get into in the future. Um, but all you have to do to do that is type the word not in front of it. And that'll alternate between true and false. So right now, bool sample has the value of true. Uh, so this bool sample here has a value of true. But just like up here where we take x minus 3 within the print line and we get 5 minus 3, here we're taking the information, we're saying give me the opposite of bool sample by typing the word not here. It's pretty much saying the opposite, and the opposite of true is false. So when we run this, we should see the output of false on the last line, and that's what we get. So that's the important use of Boolean variables, is you can switch back and forth between true and false very easily simply using that not command. There's also more powerful stuff in a future episode. Now let's jump back into strings and show you how you can put multiple strings together. Um, this is actually pretty simple. We're going to define three strings called local h. And we're going to set that equal to the string hello. We're going to call local w equal to world. And then we're going to go ahead and print out the following. h w. And what I'm doing here is concatenating strings. And what that means is I'm taking multiple strings and putting them together. And what I'm actually printing right here is hello. And then the double dot signifies we're going to take the string over here and mash it next to this string, which is simply a space. And then we're going to take this string, the space, and mash it up next to the W and print it all together. So let's see what we get. And uh, just to prove that this is working, we'll print H and print W separately before printing them together. Note that we get hello, and then world, and then hello space world. That's how you can combine multiple strings when you're outputting. 
And I think before we wrap up this episode, there's one more thing I want to show you and how to get information from the user on the screen and store it in a variable. So far, we've been spitting information out to the screen. Now we want to ask the user who's using the computer to put some information into a variable in the program. And to do this, we use the read command. So we're going to call local, uh, let's just call it info. And then we can do info is equal to read. And what should happen is, and I believe it's a lowercase read that we're going to need here. Uh, as soon as it hits this line of code, it's going to take whatever you type in and put it in the variable called info. And then when we're done, we'll just print info back out. Let's see what happens. So I've run my code, and after the last hello world, I didn't get that little uh, front arrow line like I have up here. It's waiting for me to input something. So I'm gonna type in, uh, this is a test. And what should happen is it should spit back out that this is a test line at the end. Now, if we want, we could do something a little bit more fancy, and we'll, uh, instead of just reading directly off the line, we can do a term.write and put in, please enter a value. Note that I put a space after the colon here. Now remember with a term.write, it's not going to put a carriage return at the end of the line. And then we issue the read command, and then we print out info. But instead, let's combine this with you entered. And remember, we use a double dot to combine one string with another. Let's run this program now. Please enter a value. I'll put in 42 and hit enter. It tells me you entered 42. So in this video you learned about comments, variables, and math. You learned how to output information to the screen and how to read information from the user. Uh, there's more interesting ways to use that read command, but we'll get to them in future episodes. For now, I think this is a pretty good wrapping up point for episode two of Direwolf 20's Computer Craft tutorial series. I hope you've learned a little bit about programming and I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, come back next time where we get into some conditional statements such as if, then, else, and a couple other things that we're gonna touch on. Uh, this is Direwolf20 signing off, uh, but before I do that, I'm going to upload this little script that I wrote to Pastebin so that you guys can access it and download it yourself and play with it a little bit. So let's go ahead and upload this to Pastebin by typing the commands Pastebin put variable part 1. This will connect to pastebin.com and it has now been run. Uh, we can now, if you guys want, while looking at this video, go out to this website, http colon slash slash pastebin.com slash this information here to go ahead and view the code in your internet browser. Don't worry, it won't hurt anything. And if you want to download the code, just download it using your in-game computer by typing pastebin get and that little magic code right there to download it onto your computers within ComputerCraft. The only thing, if you want to be able to use Pastebin, you have to enable the HTTP API by editing your ComputerCraft config file. Go into your .minecraft, into the config folder, and you should see a mod underscore computercraft.cfg. In there you're going to look for a line that probably looks like this, enable API underscore HTTP equals zero. To change this, simply change it from a zero to a one, and then save that config file, and then you'll be able to use the Pastebin program. But if you don't want to do that, no problem. Just go to the website to view the code yourself. All right, guys, this is Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.